up. Um, it's been about two weeks since I've done the video. It's like 12.40 in the a.m. Um, but I was laying um, in bed and I actually woke up because I remember there was a video that I want to watch. And it was about uh, Millennium Muslims. And so anyway, I was um, after I finished watching the video, I ended up going to um, post that information on um, Twitter. And um, I was going down my timeline and I saw a post and it pretty much was related to something with the being lazy um, to get up and do your prayer, then um, your faith with God isn't strong or something. I should be posting it, you know, the actual thing. Um, but I reposted it or whatever, and then I got a few comments or whatever, and people were like, maybe you're just tired. Maybe if this was four or five years ago, I would go with that concept. But to me, in my opinion, God deserves, he doesn't need it by any chance because he's the creator, he's all knowing, he's all everything. So he doesn't need it. But it's what he has requested of us. I think about it in the aspect that you've partied all night and you have to be to work the next day or you went out to see the movies or something or you was up all night or whatever and you have to get up to go to work the next morning. You wake up, do whatever you need to do, brush your teeth, wash your face, make something to eat if that's the case, get dressed, get in your car, drive all the way to work and make it to work by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or whatever. You do that, but you can't take out, generally speaking, two minutes to say a prayer. For a Muslim, it's kind of different because of the processes that we have to go through. Just generally speaking, we have to get up and we have to perform what this call would do. It requires us to uh, make sure that we clean our hands and we do our mouth and our nose and our face head neck and all that stuff and me i have dreads so it's extra work on me um and we have to do our feet and stuff like that and this process has to be done um if that would do or that cleanliness is broken um between prayers or whatever so it's a different process for us for just the general person who prays a, a two-minute prayer at the end of a long day even taking out two minutes of complete silence, no TV on, no kids around, no animals around, or whatever the case may be, and just actually submitting to the will of God and actually getting on your knees and saying a prayer and thanking God for what he's done for you and um, asking for whatever it is that you need or something like that. As individuals, people don't take out the time to do that. Us Muslims, we're five times a day, and we got that we do, and we got rakahs. And for me, I think about the fact that I'm able to get up and go to this job at 7 a.m., yet on my off days, I will not get up and do my prayer. But on the days that I work, I would jump up, do my prayers if everything's fine, and it really boosts me off of that day. That laziness kicks in, that reminded me of why I posted that post kicks in on the days that I'm off and I, you know my alarm go off Joey my kitten jumps up on me bites on me and messes with my dress or whatever and I would get up and I would enjoy my prayer and like really enjoy my prayers but on my off days that laziness kicks in and it's like ugh, I just <sighs> and for most people I mean if you just be real about it it was kind of tedious and um, I know for me, I go a lot of the day trying to not break my wudu, so when it's time for me to do the next prayer, I don't have to go through the whole water thing, especially being at work and then having to go into the bathrooms and, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, and again, I'm new, so I'm still getting used to everything. You know, it, it's nice when I go to my classes because one of the things my teachers always say is he preached, preached um, the oneness of God for 13 years before he went into uh, the details of all the other aspects of what you need to do as a Muslim. I'm three years in, so I have time to progress and um, perfect my religion, inshallah, if I'm living that long. When I got some comments or whatever, uh, they tried to vindicate why people don't pray in the proper way. It, it disturbed me because I think about you get up and do stuff that you want to do for your job, um, for your friends, for your family, um, for yourself. But you can't take out two minutes, generally speaking, not a Muslim prayer. Two minutes to um, do a prayer um, and thank the person who gave you that job, who provided you with that car, who gave you that family, who provided you with that money that you have and all these things. Um, and we can't take out two real minutes of complete devotion to God. For me, I have to remember that he provided me with everything and I'm very thankful for that. So let me crawl and I try to do this and I'm getting better at it. Let me crawl myself out of bed even though I don't have to go to work today and do what I need to do when it comes to what do and cleansing myself and let me go ahead and say this prayer and you know given that it's the morning prayer it's 
it's two rock odds. It's the shortest prayer that we have. So let me go and do that. And then I can crawl my tail right back in bed um, to say that you're just tired or you don't have the time. S slap me if I ever make a statement like that. Because uh, if I can say anything related to um, I'm just too tired or I'll do it another time. What if God just said, well, I don't feel like waking you up in the morning. Or I don't feel like letting your lungs take in any more air. He has control over everything and we have to take that into um, consideration when we go through our daily activities and all that stuff. As Muslims, especially here in America, um, a lot of jobs don't allow us that time to break and do all these things. And me, I'm, I've been blessed with the situation where I've had that, that, that leeway to do all these things that I need to do religiously. And I still fall short on doing it. And it's because I am human. I get caught up in work. I get caught up in uh, in the aspect of, even though I'm a proud Muslim, everybody, well, I think the majority of the people at work know that I am. But still, I get caught up in the day-to-day -day work. And, and I miss I, I miss a lot of them. And, you know, I don't take the time. And I have, like, literally a closet for me to go into or a little small room to go into and, and say my prayer, free from everybody from any distractions and all that stuff and I fail to do that from time to time and I think um, to myself sometimes what if I get off of work and I've missed my two prayers that I could have done while I was at work and I'm in the car and I'm in a car accident and God decides well that's the end and then I have to answer to him you know you, you had the time you have the permission no one's going to stop you everyone knows that you have the right to do that but you don't do it why don't you do it anything that you place above God or place before any, uh, let's just say in general, you're placing something before something else or someone before someone else. You are putting more value on that something that you're replacing with over anything else. Even if it's a friendship that you've had for years and you place something before it, it doesn't mean that that friendship is any less, don't get me wrong, but you have at that point in time placed something before it. So if at that point in time I decide um, I'm going to continue to stay on this phone and take these phone calls as opposed to taking the time out to pause, go perform what do would do or go in the closet if I still have my would do and go ahead and pray my four rockers at work, then I am placing this job over God and I am worshiping this job more at that point in time other than worshiping God for that little short period of time that requires me for, requires for me to do my prayer. So that's just something to think about, and um, sorry it took so long for a video, but I'm back, and inshallah, I have one for you next week, and I look weird with this hat on. Again, I hope this video um, speaks to someone in some type of way, form, or fashion in a positive way, and may um, Allah highlight my good attributes and um, conceal my bad attributes, and that people take away positive um, information from this video and make a positive change in their lives and and to understand that I am human just like you and we are all human we all make mistakes um, and in this particular video that we learn to prioritize and realize that um, there's a greater being and if we believe in that greater being we should take the time out to uh, show gratitude to that greater being just again like I was saying in the video too two minutes at the most um, for my brothers and sisters you know we take a little bit longer than that you know, but we have to take out that time and and do that because the next minute is not promised to us and we just always want to die in the state of Islam so peace out um, salams I'm out of here this worldly life has an end and it's then real life begins A world where we will live forever This beautiful world real life has an end It's just a bridge that must be crossed To a life that will go on forever So many years quickly slipping by Like the sleepers of the cave Wake up and make a choice Before we end up in our graves He didn't put me here in vain I know I'll be held accountable for what I do This life is just a journey